Hello and welcome back. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to start implementing Spring Security. So to begin, I'll right click here and create a new security configuration class. And I'll have that in a separate package. And I'll call it security config. Next, I'll annotate this class with add configuration annotation. This indicates that this class can also define other pins. Then to enable web security, I'll add here add enable web security annotation. This one. Next, this class will extend the web security configure adapter so this web security configure adapter class has methods that can be overwritten to configure spring security so with this in place we are going to start by defining the requests that should be authenticated and the ones that shouldn't be authenticated in order to do that I'll override a configure method so I'll select the one that takes as argument HTTP security, this one. So by default, all the requests to the server are authenticated, but this is not what we want. We want to permit certain requests as well as authenticate others. So in order to configure that, I'll type here HTTP dot authorize requests dot and matches this one and inside here we specify the request that we want to permit so if anyone wants to access the register page we should allow him to do so and also the index page and the about page we don't have that yet as well as the login page we're going to create that later on and also the CSS resources as well as whatsoever we have in WebJars. Remember we use WebJars to import Bootstrap. So, so I'll type here dot permit all like this. And any other request like uh, trying to access the profile page, trying to add a new tax, as well as trying to access the user's page should be authenticated. So I'll type here that any request dot authenticated. So if we leave it like this, Spring Security will use the default login form that it comes with. But then we want to configure our own login form. So I'll type here dot and form login dot login page now this is very important i'll type here login the name you type here should be the same name in the form login action by so doing spring security will know how to intercept and process that form when you submit it we also need to give permission to this action from happening that is the form login action so i'll type here dot permit all so when the user successfully log in, I will direct the user to the profile page. I will type here dot default success URL. Let me hit enter here so that we can see what we are doing. And here I will just specify profile. And finally, I will add the form logout action. So when the user successfully logs out, we should redirect the user to the login page. Now, someone might be asking, what is the difference between the login I specified here and this login here? This login is a normal GET request that will return the login form. And then this will be a POST request from the login form itself. So this one here and this one here are basically the same thing 
Next, we need to define the type of authentication that we are going to be using. There are so many types of authentication like Facebook authentication and Ordenite. In this tutorial, we are going to be using JDBC authentication. So in order to do that, I will overwrite another configure method. The one that takes as argument the authentication manager builder. Then I'll get rid of this as well as this one there. So with this in place, I can then use this authentication manager builder to configure JDBC authentication. So I'll type here auth, this is this variable name here, dot JDBC authentication dot data source. So we need to inject inside here the data source at auto wired. This should be from javax.sql. So next I'll create the queries that returns the user's credentials as well as the rules from the database. I'll start by creating the query that returns the user's credentials. So I'll type here dot user by username query and inside here we need to pass in the query string. So this is our SQL. I'll type here select email. as principal, password, as credentials, true, I'll explain this in a moment, from user where email is equal to question mark. So the reason for adding this true here is that Spring Security requires that if this variable is true, the user can be authenticated. If it is false, the user cannot be authenticated even if the user's email and password are correct. Another way to do this is to create a variable of type boolean in the user class and set it to true when the user is being created. So this question mark here is just like a placeholder for the email that will be submitted in the form. So next we need to select the user's rule. Or type here authorities by username query so here we are going to be making the selection from the third table that was generated when we did the many-to-many -many relationship this table here it's good to take note of these columns here the, the user email and the role name so inside here, I'll type select user underscore email once more as principal role underscore name as role from user underscore roles where user underscore email is equal to question mark. And finally, we need to encode this password before comparing it with the password that is already encoded and is present in the database. Remember, we encoded the password when we were creating a new user. So here, I'll type dot password encoder. And inside here, we need to pass the password encoder B. It doesn't exist yet. Let's create it. So this should return a new bcrypt password encoder. This one here. And this should be a bean. So I'll type here at bean. Next, I'll add here a role prefix. So, role prefix. I'll just type here role underscore. This is so that we can be able to 
access the role admin or the role user as role admin or role user for example so with this in place we are basically done with the spring security configuration in the next video we are going to implement the login and the logout functionality until then see you